This is writer and game designer Robin D. Laws for Pelgrane Video. And today, I'm going to take you through a uh, step-by-step of character creation in my new game, the Yellow King role-playing game. Uh, let us reach over for its massive majesty, and then we're going to uh, open up its beautiful uh, slipcase held together with the exciting power of magnets. We're going to uh, momentarily set aside the uh, beautiful GM screen that's hiding inside the slipcase that is the other side of the slipcase, as if reality itself is, is morphing and changing shape. And you'll note that we have four books uh, inside of this, because in the Yellow King role-playing game, in its most elaborate form, the uh, players uh, go on a journey through four different realities, playing four sets of interrelated characters. And we're going to start, uh, in this case, with the first book in the series, the Paris book, in which you play uh, American art students on the loose in Belle Epoque, Paris in the 1890s. Robert W. Chambers wrote the original four stories that comprise the core of the Yellow King mythos that this uh, game uh, develops, as other writers have developed it over the years. And uh, so it's fitting that the players begin in the uh, most exciting uh, one of the most exciting times, anyway, of uh, history in uh, Paris. It's a time of uh, glamour and social change and artistic ferment, and uh, they're right in the middle of it, getting mixed up in reality horror. Um, so when you uh, play the Yellow King to begin with in this setting, the first thing you do is you pick your kits. As I said earlier, you're playing uh, mostly American art students uh, on the loose in Paris, and you have uh, you may not have a ton of money at your disposal, but, you know, the family's back home, they're taking care of you. But nonetheless, you've come to Paris to learn to be who you're going to become. Um, and uh, so most of you are either directly attending the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris, the fine arts school, or uh, you are sort of in the circle of, of friends around those people. Um, and so to begin with, you pick your kit, your investigative kit which tells you how you investigate mysteries. Uh, this is a gumshoe game, and the main thing that gumshoe says is that it's never interesting to fail to get information. So the investigative abilities that you wind up with, when you use them in play, you don't have to roll a die, there's no chance involved in whether they succeed. As long as you're looking in the right place, using an appropriate ability, you get the information you need to move forward into the story, uh, rather than being stymied and waiting around for the GM to come up with some other way for you to get the information you needed for something interesting to happen. So, so you start out by picking one of the investigative kits, and uh, these are uh, architecture student, self-explanatory, a uh, bell lettrist, uh, that requires a bit of explanation. Uh, you are a, a journalist, uh, sort of figures, journalist, essayist, a little bit fancy schmancy, uh, writing uh, either for a publication back home or perhaps um, one of the many, many newspapers and magazines and journals in Paris are probably all, all of the, those things. Uh, and so there's a, a bit of a creativity to what you're doing. You're not just, you're not a mere ink stained scribbler, uh, but sometimes you have to go out and investigate and learn things. Um, there's a landscape painter, also self-explanatory. Then we come to the muse. Uh, this is a character that uh, people often choose to play as a local, as a Parisian who kind of knows uh, the score uh, all through the different levels of uh, society from high to low, particularly involved with the art scene. And this is someone who uh, inspires people to uh, paint about them, to uh, write about them, to make them characters in the play, or just to gossip about them, someone who's very exciting. Uh, it's often uh, chosen to play as a woman, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, next, we come to the poet, uh, finally the uh, portrait painter and the sculptor. Um, and so when you look at each of those kits, you will see that they have four investigative abilities, and you don't need to pick any more abilities than that, you just pick the kit. Uh, so uh, for example, the architecture student has, surprise, surprise, architecture, art history, officialdom, which is the ability to navigate bureaucracy, uh, which we'll need when you decide to start putting buildings up, and then technology. Uh, the bell lettrist has bell lettres, uh, which is sort of the journalism research, uh, but also fancy talking skill, uh, history, uh, reassurance. This is another interpersonal skill that is very important when you need to calm someone down or make them feel that they're not going to get horrible repercussions uh, from sharing information with you. That's what you use. And then uh, research. Uh, which is the ability that you use to, to hit the library and find the documents that you need. Uh, this is a classic investigative uh, tool. 
the landscape painter has art history once again, a natural uh, history, uh, that's the science of the natural world, of course, uh, negotiation and painting. The muse has bonhomie, the, uh, which is basically your ability to, to get information uh, by people, uh, from people just by being really, really charming. Uh, inspiration and uh, miscellany. Uh, inspiration is the uh, way that you appeal to the person's better nature. And miscellany is just, you know, uh, a whole lot of uh, things about a whole lot of uh, things that don't fit into other uh, accepted categories. The poet has demimond, that's the knowledge of the Parisian underworld because we know poets like to get into trouble. Uh, intuition, uh, which is a uh, sort of a, a, a quasi, not quite psychic, but you just have hunches about things. Uh, so that's the basic, uh, uh, hey GM, give me a hint ability. Um, which everyone is always afraid is going to be too powerful, except the GM is like, I really need to give you a hand sign, but you have intuition. Um, and then uh, we have uh, poetry, surprise, surprise, and occultism. Uh, uh, Paris is a bustle with occult uh, rumors and craziness at this time, and uh, there's all sorts of uh, different people who are drawing uh, on the power of Catholicism or the power of theology or uh, your uh, ability to call down spirits, mediumship, and uh, you're the one who knows all of these people who are off, often feuding with one another. So it's a, uh, often sort of a specialty gossip ability too. Uh, the portrait painter has assessed honesty. That's the all important ability to see when somebody is maybe possibly probably lying to you. Uh, fashion, painting, photography, and society. That's sort of the flip side of demimond. Uh, that's the uh, ability to move in the highest upper crusty upper circles and know what's really going on behind the lines of everybody's polite conversation. And then uh, we come to the sculptor who once again has art history, has military history. Uh, there's a uh, uh, warfare uh, has momentarily stopped in Europe, but uh, uh, there's a big military buildup and uh, you might need to know about the many wars of the past when you become uh, involved in uh, history through the uh, weird march of Carcosan strangeness that is infecting the world. And then finally, steel, uh, which is your uh, ability to uh, project an intimidating front uh, toward others. Next, we move on to the general abilities. Uh, general abilities cover those things where it is just as interesting to fail, although often horrible, as it is to succeed. So that some chance is involved in whether you succeed or fail when you're trying to uh, climb a fence or maintain your uh, sense of equilibrium when the reality starts to shift under your feet or whether you're able to ride a horse and get away from the strange mask figures who are pursuing you. And uh, so in these cases, you uh, have a number of points, a pool of points that are associated with each of these abilities. When something comes up where you could possibly fail, uh, you are asked to roll a die. It's a very simple six-sided die in this game. And you can then choose to, ahead of time, add any number of your available pool points from uh, the relevant ability to increase your roll. So that if you have enough and you spend enough, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to succeed. But when do you want to do that? How often do you do that? How, and so it, it doesn't necessarily measure anything uh, concrete or simulative in the world. What it uh, does is it doles out spotlight time to you according to the specialties that you choose to be especially uh, great in. Um, you can choose a general kit uh, that's recommended if you're starting out. Uh, and so, for example, you can be an athlete, uh, a former cadet, someone who's had military training in the past, uh, a cool customer that just sort of uh, is more about kind of your, your confidence and how hard you are to shake. So that's the one that has the highest composure uh, pool. And uh, composure is pretty darn important in the Yellow King, especially when I'm running. Uh, scrounger, uh, you you know you can find stuff. You you uh, you know people don't necessarily know how you always have the right thing, but you, you kind of do. Former med student, very important. You want to be able to patch uh, people up, uh, uh, possibly yourself. Um, most likely other people though. Um, uh, the tinkerer, uh, that's you know devices and gadgets. Uh, raised on a farm, uh, that uh, uh, is an uh, interesting uh, portfolio of abilities and uh, a sort of a fun contrast that you can create with your high flute and artistic ambitions and uh, what your rich parents had you doing back home. Uh, raised on the streets, that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. You, uh, you may be rich now, 
uh, but uh, you were maybe climbing out the window a lot and getting into trouble. Um, or maybe it turned out that uh, you were uh, an orphan who suddenly turned out to be rich enough to send to art school. Who knows? You can fill up the details. And then finally, spent time in a factory, uh, which implies that your, uh, your dad is probably a, a rich industrialist of some kind. Uh, you might be wondering, hey, why, uh, why can't I just freestyle this? And uh, your GM may in fact ask you to freestyle it, especially if uh, she's not using the uh, assumed uh, default uh, concept of everyone being art students. In that case, you pick four investigative abilities and you uh, allocate 32 points uh, between your general abilities. Uh, the general abilities are athletics. Uh, this is your uh, what you use when you want to evade uh, physical danger. Uh, so if uh, uh, the chandelier is uh, dropping on you in the Opera Garnier, the Paris Opera House, that's the uh, ability that you uh, make a test against to see if the uh, chandelier hits you or not. Uh, composure, uh, aforementioned a bunch of times, this is your ability to re resist the uh, mental strain of uh, horrific uh, situations. Uh, fighting, uh, sometimes there's a scrap that comes up. Uh, Paris students are notorious for getting into fights and you may be getting uh, into trouble with more than just uh, other students and the police, uh, but uh, all manner of weird beings. So you, you might want to think of a little bit of fighting. Uh, first aid, uh, that's your ability to uh, patch up other people. Uh, health, uh, that is your uh, resistance to uh, harm to the body. So if you are foolish enough to drink a bunch of uh, poison or just maybe drink a whole lot of alcohol, which is poison, right? Uh, that would be the, the test that you make in order to see how badly affected uh, you are, if at all. Mechanics, your ability to fix things. Riding, horses, horses, uh, sense trouble. Uh, this is your uh, ability uh, to, to know when danger is approaching. That's a little different than the informational abilities because something uh, horrible can happen to you. And it's just as interesting to fail, unlike the investigative abilities. That's why it's such a general ability. Uh, sneaking, uh, there's a lot of creeping around uh, in uh, gumshoe. Uh, players often would rather sneak into someone's uh, house and riffle through their papers than uh, you know, actually talk to them. Uh, and that's the ability that they're going to use for that. And finally, preparedness, the famous gumshoe ability, uh, where you roll to see if you've already thought to bring a, uh, along the thing that you absolutely needed to have uh, with you, whether that's a, a sword or uh, a lantern or uh, the uh, collected uh, works of uh, Shakespeare, wh whatever it is, you uh, test preparedness to see if you have that. Um, and as I've mentioned, uh, if you take a kit, those questions are already sorted out for you. Uh, next thing, you're going to pick a name. Uh, the book supplies a lot of sample names so that you can have an appropriately periodish uh, first and last name for your character. Now you come to the drive. Uh, the drive uh, is consistent through a lot of gumshoe games, and this is what uh, answers the question, why am I going down into this terrible basement where the weird mass figures possibly lurk? Uh, uh, you're in a horror game. Why do you move toward horror? Why do you move toward uh, mystery? And there can be all sorts of different reasons that you choose to do that. In Yellow King, I recommend that you uh, just come up with an idea on your own, but there is a list of suggestions. So for example, you could love adventure. You could just be kind of arrogant and uh, not concerned for your welfare because how could you possibly fail? Or you could have a can-do attitude or uh, perhaps um, you're worried about your other friends who are a little heedless and you gotta go with them. You know it's a bad idea, but you know, uh, George over there is headed down in the basement, so you gotta go. Uh, curiosity, you know, you can't, uh, uh, let this mystery go. You got to find out what's going on with the strange, uh, weird shaped uh, head dogs that are singing uh, in a, a weird human like language. Human like, not, not human, but not dog like. I, I got to find out what that is. I got curiosity. Uh, dread premonition. You can just have a sense of something that is horrible is going to happen, and you know it will be even more horrible if you don't figure out what it is. Uh, ennui. Uh, now you have to be careful with this one. This is, of course, a sense of boredom and languor that affected many of the decadent uh, poets and uh, writers and artists of this era. But you are not uh, too bored to do things. You are so bored that you are willing to move toward your danger in order to relieve your boredom. Uh, you might be uh, suffering under a family curse. That's a classic one. Uh, you could just have a gothic sensibility that drives you toward uh, weirdness. Uh, 
you may be seeking artistic inspiration when something uh, bizarre happens. You may want uh, to, with your rationality, establish that, no, no, this can't possibly be true. There's a, uh, there's a scientific explanation for uh, the strange uh, uh, yellow uh, figures who keep changing shape and they're hiding underneath the window. There's, it's, it's gas fumes. That's what it is. I'm going to prove it's gas fumes. Uh, you're a seeker. You're just out to find uh, what uh, awaits you in life. You're just uh, uh, pursuing experience and uh, weird danger. That's experience. Boy, uh, you're a showboat. Uh, you want everyone to know how uh, awesome and groovy and wonderful you are. So, of course, you're going to go uh, down those steps because uh, you're the best and you've got to prove it. Or uh, just sort of a yen for a scientific discovery that you want to find out the, what's going on uh, behind the curtain in order to uh, document it and, and uh, write about it. Next, you devise your deuced peculiar business. This is an experience that you've recently had that has an eerie overtone, something mysterious about it. And uh, what it leads you to do is, uh, again, you're sort of giving the GM a a plot hook that you want to engage with, some form of weird danger uh, that excites you. For example, you might say that that sculpture of Salome that you've been working on as a sculptor, the other morning, it seemed to have blood on its lips, but that couldn't possibly be, and you, it was paint or something. Why there would be paint on your sculpting studio, you don't know, but anyway, it seemed to have blood on its lips. Who knows? Uh, or, you know, you found the weird museum that you've been dreaming about for years in Paris, and you went down and you saw all of, all of, all of these amazing things, although some of them you don't remember so clearly because that kind of messed with your mind a bit, but you went back to that street the next day and you went to the Rue de Dragon and they, it, the museum wasn't there, so you must be confused. You can find the museum again, no problem. Uh, perhaps you just, you know, uh, looked down from your garret and you saw in the courtyard there's a woman dressed as a chambermaid uh, dragging a gore-soaked trunk across the uh, way there. And that's not even supernatural. That's something that could totally happen. Uh, or, you know, if you want to come up with a more supernatural one, perhaps you saw some demonic capering uh, out on the street. Uh, weird, inhuman figures. Uh, that's always a good one. Or, you know, uh, you attended a salon of uh, uh, Parisian intellectuals and artists and athletes. And at the end of that process, uh, you were ushered into a room where you met four occultists who wanted you to join their circle of esoteric wisdom. And then, you know, you were non-committal, but maybe you should do that. Who, who knows? That might lead somewhere. Or, you know, it's just that uh, in your favorite hangout that you go to, uh, someone left a bottle of absinthe that has a what looks like a monkey's paw in it, or it's maybe just a tea leaf, giant tea branch that looks like a monkey's paw. And... Uh, you ask the proprietor who left it for you, and he said, you left this. And uh, then you uh, want to describe your character a little bit so that you can uh, visualize them and create that uh, visual sense for uh, the other players in the group as well as the GM. Next we come to relationships, and what you do is you specify in each case uh, one other player character in the group that you feel a sense of protectiveness towards. And what this does is sort of establishes why you all care about each other, why you hang out with each other, and sort of avoids that common role-playing thing where it's like six loners all hanging out and arguing with each other, and you keep wondering, why do these people even hang out with each other? And this explains why. So uh, you may decide, uh, you know, if you're the sculptor in the group, uh, you may decide that you, uh, you've you heard the drive of the bell lettrist, and you know that person is impetuous and rushes headlong into danger out of curiosity, and you're worried about them. So you want to control their impetuosity, at least leaven a little so that uh, they don't get into too much danger. And this can fold into your own drive. That's a good one for a comradeship drive. Uh, or, uh, you know, it might be something that suggests a shared backstory. So it could be that uh, you and the portrait painter uh, were uh, raised together and attended school together and have a long uh, history as uh, close uh, friends with a, a bond that can't uh, possibly be shaken. And that's the final step. So uh, you now uh, have uh, characters who uh, have ways of gaining information in the world. 
who uh, can react to trouble and danger and uh, sometimes overcome it uh, with their general abilities. You have a reason to investigate and pursue mystery, even though as art students, maybe you should be working on your sculptures and your paintings, but instead you're going out at night to find out uh, why uh, the gargoyles on Notre Dame appear to be moving and possibly pursuing you. Uh, and uh, you have your reasons for engaging with one another and, and why you care about it, each other with it as a group. And so that's all very simple and straightforward. And now you're ready for the weird mystery that comes when you discover that some of you somehow are involved with a terrible book, a play that, uh, called The King in Yellow that is destabilizing uh, minds societies, perhaps even reality itself, and the trouble is all going to begin for you in Paris. This has been Robin D. Laws for Pellegrin Video.